Hi there, it's Kevin Ward with Yes Masters Real Estate Success Training and the creator of Agent Power Launch, an intense course designed to help real estate agents who are brand new to the business, who are rookies to start their business fast and get profitable quickly. And today's video is actually on how to pass your real estate exam. Now, normally I'm, I'm, I spend my time training eight people who already got their license, training real estate agents. However, in the past, I've also for a couple of years taught a real estate licensing school and helped a lot of agents get the real estate license. And one of the things that I get a lot of questions about and I get comments on this on YouTube is how do I get, how do I pass my real estate exam? So if you're, if you've already got your real estate license, you may not need to watch this video unless you're thinking about taking your broker's exam and becoming a broker, but if you're getting ready to take a broker's exam or your real estate licensing exam, I'm gonna share with you two, I'm actually gonna shoot two videos here. This first video is gonna be on 10 pre-test preparation tips, 10 things you can do to get ready to pass your test the first time with flying colors. And then the second video is gonna be eight strategies to actually help you pass the test at the exam so you pass it the first time out. So let's just dive into this because it's a lot of stuff, a lot of content, a lot of material I want to cover to help you really get ready here so that you can get ready for your real estate exam and pass it on the first try. So there's 10 things. Number one, the first two of these are going to actually start a lot with mindset. So number one is positive declarations. Now, you've probably heard of the term affirmations and people talk about how important it is that we have positive affirmations like I am the best or whatever. And it's true that the words that you speak and the things that you thought think make a huge difference in your mindset. So what I want you to understand is the power of positive declarations. And I like the word declarations rather than affirmations because when you a declaration is more forceful. It is more powerful than an affirmation. To declare means to state something emphatically and forcefully and with authority and conviction. And so I want you to take and create two or three or four or five powerful declarations to help prepare you to pass the test the first time. So for example, I, I'm going to get, let me just give you some powerful declarations that would help you in getting ready for the test. So for example, say, I am a great test taker. I easily pass my exam with flying colors. I know the answer to every question. Now notice as I'm giving them to you, I'm giving them with conviction. I'm giving them with passion. I'm not saying, uh, I easily know the answer to every question. I hope, I think, please. No, you gotta have conviction. You wanna have power as you state that you're declaring it to your mind, you're declaring it to your subconscious brain, and you're declaring it to the universe that I am a great test taker. Another one is answers come to me quickly and easily. I have a great memory. Now what a powerful declaration. I have a great memory. Because be honest, have you ever had one of those moments where you go like, oh, I can't remember anything? Or, oh, this is so hard. Well, whether you knew it or not, those were declarations. You were making a declaration to your subconscious mind, I can't remember anything. Now, here's what you've got to understand about your subconscious mind. Your subconscious mind is literally available for you to program it to think any way you want it to think. And when you're telling it, I can't remember anything, you're your subconscious mind will obey, will obediently help you not remember. It will help you not be able to remember because you've programmed it to think, I can't remember anything. So don't do that. So number one is you want to create some positive declarations. I guess just gave you some examples of some powerful declarations. Pick two or three and just start saying them out loud with conviction while you're studying, while you're getting ready for every day until you pass your exam, you wanna be saying those declarations. And secondly, is you wanna get rid of, eliminate any of the negative declarations, any of the negative, unsupportive thoughts that pop into your brain, like I can't remember anything, or this is so hard, or oh my goodness, I'm so terrified, or I'm freaking out. Here's, here's the question that I learned to ask myself anytime I had a thought like that, and that is how does that thought serve me? How does this thought serve me? And if that thought doesn't serve me, if that thought is not helping me, then immediately you want to eliminate it. Now, how do you eliminate a negative thought? With a positive declaration. Oh, I can't remember anything. No, 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 say cancel, cancel. I have a great memory. I have a great memory. I have a great memory. I know the answer to every question. I know the answer to every question. I know the answer to every question. You eliminate the negative unsupportive thoughts and you replace them with positive declarations. And when you make that mindset shift, 
everything gets better in the way you as you prepare for the test as you get ready to take the test and then once you show up at the test your mind has developed a new level of confidence and the the negative thoughts have been eliminated they've been taught to take a flying leap thank you for sharing i don't need you get out and the positive declarations are in there going like i have a great memory i passed this exam with flying colors it's a piece of cake i know the answer to every question i have a great memory i am a great test taker all of that makes a huge difference in your brain. Number two, that's number one and number two. Number three, you've taken your real estate licensing courses, now what next? And here's the answer. Do this ASAP. Okay, I'm gonna be real clear on this. Would you just get it done already? <laughs> you, took, you took the classes, you took the licensing courses, now take the test, pass it, get your license, start making money. But what has been amazing to me is even when I was teaching real estate courses, the, the licensing courses, is how many agents would take the courses and then they would procrastinate and procrastinate and procrastinate and procrastinate before taking their state exam. Oh, I'm not ready. Oh, I'm just, oh, I'm so worried about it. Oh, I'm gonna, I've got to get, I've got to have, I've got to get time to prepare. And what do you think is going to happen? The longer you wait, you think, you know, are you waiting for your, the knowledge you got in your brain to sharpen up? No, it's gonna, you're, it's gonna go away. The longer you take from the time you took your courses till you pass the test, the harder it is to pass it because you, all the stuff you wanna take the test while it's fresh. And now that you've learned it all and you've got it in your brain, get it done, finish it. Don't put it off, don't procrastinate. The people who procrastinate here are more likely to procrastinate once they get their license, which makes you broke. You can't procrastinate in this business. So don't procrastinate on getting your test taken and your, and your license. So do it ASAP. It's easier and it's better because you make, can start making money faster. Number four is time block. You've got to set aside time to study. Now, two, there's two ways you can do it. You can one is time block one to three hours a day for a period of two or three or four weeks. And that would be every day just time block you're going to spend some time studying and preparing every day or another way you can do it is the crash course method and the crash course method is time blocking an entire day or an entire two days depending on where you are and what kind of course it is what kind of classes there are and you're literally going to go in there and just cram it all in but you're going to time block it which means you set aside that time to go to a class or you set aside that time to sit down and study that you create the time. It's kind of like, well, I need, I just don't have time. Well, you make the time. If this is important to you, time block it. Set aside the time so that you're not scheduling your test date and then running up to three nights before and going like, oh no, I'm not ready, oh no. And then you freak out and you create stress. Now, what stress does is stress doesn't make you stupid, it, but it does make your brain not be able to remember as well. Stress makes your brain kind of freeze up and the stuff doesn't come to you. And when you're not prepared, then that's when you have what we call test anxiety. And what I'm teaching you, all these, these 10 steps are designed to help eliminate test anxiety so that when you walk in there, you are cool and confident and it, the answers just flow out magically. It's, out. it's awesome. And you can do this. So you got a time block. Number five is I want you to take as many practice tests as you can. And with a lot of your courses, if they're online courses or not, a lot of you have online, they give you practice exams. Practice, and hopefully they do it where it's on a computer, either online or on a, on a software, so that you can practice the test and it's more simulated like your state exams are. And the reason this is important is because you've learned the information, but when you learn the information in a book, and then you sit down at, in the exam room to take a test, the test is not like the book. Why? Because now it's all, you know, multiple choice. It's questions and it's all tricky, tricky. And it's like they're trying to trick you. So when you practice taking the test, you're practicing, you're actually learning the information in the format that you're going to be tested on the information. So you get used to seeing the information in a test, a test format. So it's way easier and less stressful when you get into the actual real estate licensing exam. I hope that makes sense. So you want to take as many practice tests. In fact, that was how I did most of my studying was not reading through the books. Most of the studying was actually just taking practice tests. And I figured when I started scoring 90, 95 percent on all those tests, I knew I could go into the test, the real thing and get and pass. That was all that mattered. All right. So uh, you want to you want to do that. The next thing is you want to make sure that you are learning the terms. 
And what I mean by that is real estate has its own specialized vocabulary, right? So you want to make sure that you're learning the terms. And one of the easiest ways to do that is to take your, your course material, your course books, and just go through the glossaries or the vocabularies. So at the end of every chapter, it may have a vocabulary or they may give you a list of real estate terms. And if you'll just sit down and re literally read the word and then read the definition and read through those glossaries, it's amazing because when you're familiar with the real estate lingo, with the real estate terms and what they mean, most of the questions fit into that terminology. So when you learn the terms, it's a very powerful way to help you pass most of the test questions. Next is you've got, if you're assuming you've used books and you've got, they've given you books, the textbooks with your real estate uh, class, and especially if you set in class and highlight it and all that, here's one of the great things you can do is, is scan through the books. Don't try to read them all. Don't try to study it all. Literally, if you'll just scan them, you just look through there and you, see, you look at the page and you see where you highlighted, see where you highlighted, and scan through there. You're not trying to memorize it all. At this point, what you're doing is you're literally just taking a mental image of the stuff. Now, here's, I know this is kind of sounds weird, but all of us have a photographic memory. Now, what we don't, most, most of us do not have is a skill at recalling what's in our memory. In other words, it's all in there, it's just how do we get it out? Well, that's going to be in the second test, uh, the, the second video, I'm going to show you some strategies for how you help that information just kind of flow out. But the thing is, if you'll understand that if you'll just scan through the book and look at each page and not try to read it necessarily, but and take your, go through there where you literally sit down and in an hour go through that, because those books are like four, you know, three or four hundred pages long, They're, you're not going to read it. It would be mind numbing. It would just, you know, you'd want to die. So scan the books. Scan through the stuff that you've highlighted. If you've gotten review material and stuff, that scan that stuff because it's literally getting in your brain. And then when you're when you go in prepared, it's easier for it to come out. And the and the answers will literally just flow out of your mind. So scan the books. Number eight is I want you to use memory hooks. Now. I don't have time to do a whole training here on how to use uh, on memory hooks for doing real estate, but I'm going to give you some examples of how you can use memory hooks to help you remember stuff. So, for example, one of the common memory hooks is there there are there are numbers and terms and stuff that you have to memorize for the real estate exam. So, for example, pretty much everyone has to remember how many square feet are in an acre. Do you know the answer? Well, here's the answer. It's 43,560. That's how many square feet are in an acre. Now, how in the world do you remember a random number like that? Well, you use a memory hook. So I'm just going to share with you my memory hook. Okay, this is my memory hook and it, you figure out your own, but this is mine. So this is, I was taught it a little different than that. This is my spin on it. But I want you to imagine, we're going to take the number 4 and we're going to divide it by 4 and 35 and 60. 43,560. And here's what I want you to picture. I want you to picture four very large, giant, fat chipmunks. And they are in a car that looks like an acorn. And you know, an acorn is the nut that chipmunks eat, right? That they stuff in their cheeks. So I want you to imagine this giant acorn car. So it looks like this huge acorn, this big nut, falls off an oak tree, and it's got wheels on it. And these four fat chipmunks top down like a convertible acorn, if you can imagine that. So you got the picture of that? You got four fat chipmunks and they are in this convertible and they are driving down the freeway 35 miles an hour going down Highway 60. Now, in Southern California, in Los Angeles and the Inland Empire where I live, there is a major freeway called the 60. And so that was how I taught it was, imagine four fat chipmunks in a big acorn car going 35 miles an hour down the 60. Now, they're driving down the, the, the carpool lane. Everybody's honking at them because they're just taking their time and they're just singing and they're singing like the chipmunks. I can't do that, but you get the point. And you create a visual image of four fat chipmunks in an acorn car driving 35 miles an hour down the highway 60. Now, I'll give you another spin on it. In Texas, where I originally started real estate, there is a major interstate highway, Highway 35. In fact, it goes through, I think, a lot of the middle of the U.S. And so when I learned it the first time, it was four, it wasn't chipmunks, but I'm going to give you the chipmunks, four fat chipmunks in an acorn car going down I-35, Interstate 35, six, at 60 miles an hour. So here they are, they're going down the highway at 60 miles an hour, down I-35, four fat chipmunks, 35, down the Interstate 35, going 60 miles an hour, and everybody else going 70, 80 miles an hour and honking at them. And, and if you got the image, now you can remember that. Now, where are the four chipmunks going? They're on their way to their acre lot. That's it. 
So four, four fat chipmunks going down, going 35 miles an hour down the 60 or four fat chipmunks going down I-35, 60 miles an hour on their way to their one acre lot. That's how many square feet are in an acre. Now, weird, okay, I know, I know it's weird, but you know what, you remember it. Okay, let me, you want another one? So how many feet are in a mile? Well, you gotta remember there's 5,280. How do you remember that? Well, there's 52 car, uh, cards in a deck of cards. So just picture a deck of cards. Just picture a deck of 52 cards with a big neon green 80 on it. So there's 52 80. 52, and that's a deck of cards. And those deck of cards are scattered down the freeway for a mile, giant cards. 52 cards in a deck with a big neon 80 on the back of all the cards, one mile down the freeway. There you go, 5,280 feet in a mile. And you can do stuff like that with numbers. You can do, another way to remember numbers is with rhymes. You know, like when did Columbus discover America? In 1492, Columbus sailed the ocean blue. Well, how do we remember when did Columbus discovered America? because we have a rhyme. And so you can use a rhyme, you can use songs, you can use poems, all that kind of creative stuff like that. Let me give you another one. Um, there's one that's the four walls technique. And this is for remembering a list. So you got a list of three or four items or up to eight items. And I'll show you how you use a, what I call the wall technique. I don't think I made that up. It, I didn't make the technique up, but I call it the wall technique. So imagine the room you're sitting in, and just, it doesn't matter which room it is, just the room you're sitting in, and typically there's four walls, right? So the wall directly in front of you is wall number one, and then to your right, we'll go clockwise here, the way we read right to left, uh, or left to right rather, is wall number one's in front of you, wall number two to your right, wall number three behind you, wall number four to your left. So on wall number one, you, you picture what it is you wanna remember. So let me just give you an example. I'm gonna give you a list right now of stuff. So I want you to remember a yellow lion, a brown tiger, a black bear, and a purple alligator. Okay, now I just gave you a list of four things, right? Now, can you, could you repeat back to me those four things that I just gave you? Try it right now. What did I just give you? I gave you four, four animals and a color. Can you give them back to me in the right order and all four of them? And the right color, you gotta match the right color with the right animal. Okay, now here's, here's a cool thing. Here's how you could do that with anything and remember it for a long time. And that is by making it visual, by creating an image, which is exactly what we did here and here. So the, the wall technique is, so the first thing I gave you was a yellow tiger. So I want you just to now imagine on that wall a picture or a huge yellow tiger plastered on the wall in front of you. And just visualize that, visualize that big yellow tiger picked, plastered on the wall in front of you. And then over here, the next thing I told, asked you to remember was a brown lion. So I want you to picture a br huge brown lion plastered on that wall, whether it's a real lion or a picture of the lion, it doesn't matter as long as it's graphic, as long as it's visual. And then behind you, the next, the third animal I told you to remember was a black bear. So I want you just to picture on the wall behind you, this is the wall behind me, is a huge black bear. And then over here to my left, wall number four, is a what? Yeah, purple alligator. So you got the purple alligator plastered right here. Now, if you'll visualize that, so I just visualize yellow tiger, brown lion, black bear, purple alligator. And you can literally walk into any room, and I promise you right now, tomorrow, you'll remember, if somebody were to ask you, what were the four animals that you, Kevin talked to you about on that video yesterday? You could tell them exactly what the four animals were, what color each of them was, and you could tell them in order. Why? Because you visually created that. And you can do that with, if you, if you have to memorize like three things or four things, two, you don't really need the walls, but let's, if you could, it would do, it'll work for literally up to eight things. So you gotta use the top of the wall first time around, one, two, three, four, and then the bottom of the wall, five, six, seven, eight, the second time around, and you can remember up to eight things that you can plaster on the wall. And you can get more complicated with it than that, but that'll help you remember lists. If you've got to remember a list of things like different zones or different types of zoning or whatever it is um, that you may run into. And if you'll use that image technique and you may have to take some, some of the words and you may have to, if they're, not a, if they're not a picture, you may have to create a picture with them, uh, visualize something about them and then use those memory hooks and they'll help you. Now, if you're like, well, that's not enough. I need more help on that. Google it, Google memory hooks, Google how to remember stuff. 
I mean, literally Google how to pass a test. And this, the training I'm giving you here is real estate specific, but there's a lot of great material out there on how to improve your memory and how to remember stuff and how to memorize lists and remember facts and figures and numbers and so forth. So memory hooks. Now the last two real quickly are things that will help you as you're getting ready for the test that will help you go in and, and, and perform at a high level on the test. So number nine is you want to make sure that you hydrate, that you go in hydrated. So the day before you want to make sure you're drinking a lot of water and the day of you want to make sure you're drinking a lot of water and that you eat well eat well so make sure you eat well because what you don't want to do is the night before the day before is you don't want to eat a bunch of stuff you don't want to go out drinking and have a bunch of alcohol in your in your brain and then especially the morning of avoid anything like sugary sugary foods greasy foods heavy foods any any uh, fried foods anything like that because what those literally and physiologically they slow your brain function and you don't want to do that you don't want to walk in there groggy and your brain fried from the heavy food you just ate or a lot of sugar if you just if you drink a coke a big coke before you go in you're gonna have a sugar crash and your brain does not function as well your memory recall is slower your ability your reasoning and, and like you're doing math stuff your math questions you're gonna have a harder time with them because your brain is foggy so don't put yourself in that position so make sure you're hydrated drink lots of water the more, when you're more hydrated your brain is happy and when your brain is happy it's gonna serve you better better recall and better uh, thinking skills and then finally the next thing and very much associated with that is also make sure that you are well rested you want to be rested get lots of sleep the night before the exam you want to make sure that you get plenty of uh, of rest plenty of sleep because a rested brain recalls information better than a sleepy brain so if your brain is tired it is not going to serve you as well as if it's well rested well hydrated it's well programmed because you've eliminated the negative and you got the positive in here and if you'll take the time and the discipline and just prepare it and just knowing all of this it's not a lot of effort it's just a matter of being clear about hey this is going to help me pass this test and do well and i know you're going to do it well because you get it done fast make money faster that's why you started doing this in the first place. On the next video, we're going to talk about how to actually show up at the exam and pass it with flying colors on the first try. We'll talk soon.